There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge. All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. This is your first time tuning in. This is a weekly trade ideas list. We go over individual tickers as well as we go over the spy and the QQQ at the end. Also, an additional indicator such as a breadth indicator to measure stock trends. And as well, sometimes we go over the VIX if it's looking like it needs to be evaluated. If you tuned in last week, we actually had a pretty good list. We had coin. Affirm and SE all for calls on the week for options. All three did pretty good or paid at some point. Monday, we had Coin and Affirm both run pretty well at the open, and then they both kind of sold off the rest of the week. SE just had a really good week in general, basically ran most of the week all the way up to $40, which is our price target overall. So overall, really good list last week, even though we only had three. Hopefully you guys capitalized on that, and hopefully this week we'll also have a good list. Before we get into that, we're going to go over the economic calendar really fast. So we do have a couple big data sets this week. We have the Jolt's job openings on Tuesday. Definitely pay attention to that at 10 a.m. And we also have consumer confidence at the same time, so definitely pay attention to that. As well as on Wednesday, we have ADP employment. This is a hit or miss if it's going to affect the market much. It sometimes does and sometimes doesn't. And then we also have another PMI reading, the Chicago Business Barometer. So PMIs always have a potential to move the market so pay attention to that at 9 45 and then on thursday we have our usual initial jobless claims and then most importantly i would just pay attention to the manufacturing pmi and also ism manufacturing one at 9 45 for the pmis and then also at 10 a.m for ism manufacturing these two can definitely move the market and then friday is the big one february 2nd that's going to be u.s non-farm payrolls this is the biggest labor data set every single time it drops it basically has huge market volatility you'll see a lot of movement in the pre-market just from this one data set and then also following that it comes out with the u.s unemployment rate and also hourly wages and then also at 10 a.m uh consumer sentiment this is always a pretty big one as well it just depends factory orders not so much so definitely pay attention to the non-farm payrolls and consumer sentiment at 10. And before we get into the individual tickers, we're going to go over the seasonality. I try to cover this every single week to give an idea of the trend for our specific week or weeks ahead. Right now, we are looking at January 29th to February 16th, which is the next monthly OPEX date. So this is a big February expiration for the monthly options contracts. And I feel like it's an important date because after the 16th, you can see there's a really big pullback. So you can see it's actually pretty bullish here from the 29th up to the 16th. We do have a nice little up thrust here up into the second or third. And there's kind of a stall out, as you can see here, it's kind of chop. And then after the 10th is kind of when we get another big up thrust. And this is the 20 year data set. If we go down to 15, it's kind of similar. We have that similar up thrust. You have a little consolidation and another up thrust. If we go to 10 years, which is kind of a little bit less reliable, but it's good to see recent years of price action. It's kind of similar. You got a up thrust at the start, a little bit of consolidation and a big up thrust up into the midpoint of the month. So they all kind of look similar. And that's worth noting, you got the 10, the 15 and the 20 year all kind of look the same in some source, despite having a 10 year difference between the 10 year data set and the 20 year data set. So it looks pretty bullish. I would say for this week for seasonality, obviously with the indexes at the levels they are at right now, they are very overextended. I would say overbought almost. We're kind of just trending over the moving averages, just riding the trend and we just kind of keep melting up. It's really hard to call a top. We don't have a reversal signal, some type of big red bar, some type of topping pattern. We only have a single top right now and it's very, very small. I wouldn't even call it a top, honestly. So the market's still trending and it is very risky to try to call the top here. While we have seasonality, pretty bullish here coming up as well. But you definitely want to be careful because the market has already ran so much. It's already broken over the all-time high. It hasn't really had a pullback since. So you got to be careful with that. But definitely, you know, keep the seasonality in mind. This is the 29th to February 16th. So it's about the next two weeks. Definitely could expect the trend to keep going. 
And then probably this midpoint here, once February starts, we kind of do get a stall out point. And onto the setups, we're gonna go over a couple. So we got three this week. And honestly, these aren't even confirmed yet. It was very hard to find individual tickers this week. Lots of stuff is already overbought. We got lots of things that are not even broken out of a pattern yet as well, as well as these SQ and coin that we're gonna go over next. They aren't broken out yet, but they are setting up. So that's why we're gonna go over them. And we'll also set some alerts for some future trades in the future. But for Neo here, I really like this for a further outswing. Obviously, it's been getting beat down pretty bad. Uh, anything tied to China has been struggling. Their economy data has not been good, as well as lots of political issues. You know, overall, just their economic data and also real estate has been having some issues as well, which kind of has led to a lot of money rotating out of China. And we've kind of seen that pushing into other things. I mean, even Japan has been doing better. Other Asian markets have been doing okay, but China has just been getting smashed. But that does set up for an opportunity for contrarians. If you're looking for discounts or looking for something that's oversold, this Neo play could be worth watching. Definitely look for some upside maybe over the next few months eventually. And buy time on your expiration date maybe March minimum, go for April, something further out that you could play this retrace back up to this gap, maybe all the way up here in the nines. But overall, I mean, it will need to get over this seven level. As you can see, it's really strong support all in this area. And I added a cursor here so you can see that this whole seven area that I'm highlighting right here, very strong support. And overall, I feel like eventually we'll need to get over that in order to see that momentum back upward. And it could act as resistance as well. So if it comes up to it, it could try to reject off the back end of this previous support and you got to be careful of that as well so that's just one level to watch and as well as you have short-term support right here at 580 if we go down to the one hour you can see it's a small reaction area it's nothing huge i mean there wasn't a big impulse move off the support yet but you do have signs of it holding so you definitely want to mark this you got you know temporary bottom right here that led to this big rally and then you have a short-term kind of reaction off of it and that's why you want to mark the 580. So definitely mark that. If it starts breaking under 580, you could just, you know, throw the idea away and kind of wait for it to come back over and set up for a reversal signal. But if you really want it to be a contrarian here, it could be a good idea to go with March or April expiration. That'll give you lots of time to think, lots of time for it to fart around here at the lows and maybe try to get back up to the sevens. And then you could kind of make a decision once it gets up to the sevens, if you wanted to take profit and maybe revisit it later, or if you wanted to just wait and see how it reacts to sevens before making a decision. So you could do that, but NEO, I like calls here. It's, I mean, it's very just oversold in general. Overall, they're still bringing in about 2 billion of revenue every time they report earnings, but they kind of do have that negativity tied to them because of China. And as well as, you know, Tesla is just overall always the better pick for EV. And then you got XPeng as well, uh, ticker symbol XPEV. They're another competitor. So, I mean, you do have other EV names as well, but NEO especially just looks oversold in my opinion. I mean, if you go back all the way to IPO levels, we are below the IPO high, which is probably from this point right here at the 14s or so. And then there's the IPO low here at about five. So we're right at the IPO lows damn near, which is crazy. And even if I removed all of this, pretty much just draw the same levels. You got a bounce here, which is a bottom short-term bounce here, which is a bottom. So that's your seven. It will need to get back over on the weekly. You have overall a big rejection at 16. Those are kind of some levels you can mark on the more higher time frame charts. And then you also have this peak at 957. So that's another one you could watch. And then you have that short-term 580 that we just marked previously. So definitely watch those levels. And then you have that gap. So we basically just drew back when what we already have, but I wanted to show you how I find them. So there's the gap. Another cool thing about Neo here, we do have the KDJ oscillator up here crossing back positive. You can see the last time it crossed positive, we did get some positive momentum here, a small little up thrust before it went back negative and we had a really big downturn. So likely if you could get the KDJ going positive plus these 9 and 21 EMAs, if you can get price back over these EMAs, that would probably confirm some, some type of trend. Kind of like what you see here. So you have the combination of it breaking over your MAs right here off this bar plus the KDJ going positive. If you got that repeated again, KDJ going positive plus a break over these MAs that could bring some momentum and it'd probably be able to get back over seven again. So definitely watch that. All right, and on to the next. So this is a unconfirmed setup this is sq you can see it's not broken out yet most setups we look at are already confirmed uh this week is really hard to find setups like i said prior but i did find sq and coin which kind of have similar setups they're both in downtrends they've both had a big run up previously and they're kind of just like in the middle of a pullback phase really and they're kind of now trying to hold up that trend still but as well as kind of get a reversal 
they're just not confirmed yet. And we need to get out of this downtrend line to confirm that. You got a test one, a test two, maybe a test three right here if you zoomed in a little bit off this one day bar right here. But overall, I mean, still, it will need to get out of this in order to kind of push up and see that impulse move. Another good thing you have here, you have 6207 holding. So 62 is a bounce area right here and these four or five bars. Pretty nice reversal, but you know, met with resistance up at this area at the 70s. And then you had it retracing back down and you have one big impulse move from Friday here, uh, closing up almost 4% on the day. So 62 overall, good reaction zone. If you go to the four hour, you can see the same thing, really nice bounce. So 62, we can kind of establish as somewhat of a solid level. But like I said, it will need to break out of this downtrend because if it just keeps staying within this, it could turn into a descending triangle. It could flush the lows. And you'll wish you never even entered. So always wait for that confirmation first. That's why I mentioned this is not confirmed yet because this could still turn into a bearish pattern. A descending wedge is not always bearish. I mean, it can still kind of go down to the lows and then break out of the tight range just like that right off the support. But it's not confirmed yet. So you could get stuck in this trend line and then you'd be stuck in this little downtrend and you could have got a better entry or you could have just saved the stress, right? If you wait for the breakout, the stress is not as bad because you have that on your side, the breakout. So that's for SQ looking for that breakout eventually. But what I did, I right clicked it, you hit add alert and then we could just name it breakout. Simple as that. So now we have an alert set. You go to alerts over here. You have it set for the future. If it crosses outside of this, trading view will alert you. So this is gonna be a waiting game. And the same is gonna go for the next setup we cover next, which is coin. So coin kind of has a similar fate, right? You got a really strong uptrend. I mean, it ran for months. You had a really nice run up. Now kind of getting that initial pullback, likely to the Bitcoin ETF news, kind of the sell the news event, right? Bitcoin had a small pullback as well. And you had crypto in general kind of pullback. We had this last week on the list as well. As you can see, Monday here, we were looking at this Friday close, this nice little hammer bar right here. That's set up for a big push on Monday. It actually ran up almost 5% on Monday. So this made a really good day trade. And I did signal once it got to a good spot to take profit on day trades. And it literally sold off for the rest of the week, like basically five minutes after I sent out that watch list kind of uh, post about this being a pretty good spot to take profit. Tune into the X Trades Discord channel uh, and the watch list channel. Go check out my commentary on some of the setups because I do kind of comment on these later if I still like them if I think maybe it's at a good profit taking point or if I don't think it looks good anymore I'll send that out you know I try not to be biased or anything like that you know if it looks good I'll say it if it doesn't I'll kind of say that too so coin made its way back onto the list this week again it's basically unchanged from what we looked at last week here's Friday's close at about 124s here's Friday's close at about 124s, 125, 20 right here. So it's basically unchanged. You still have rally base, rally demand holding very, very well. You had a nice push up on Monday, like I said, but we are kind of still at the mercy of this downtrend line, which you kind of have resistance here from Friday. If we go into the 15 minute, you can see there is a big rejection off of this exact line that we have drawn on the higher time frames. So definitely draw this line from this peak to this peak right here, extend it out, and it'll bring you down to here. So we're doing the same thing with SQ. Now that we've established there was some type of third test or rejection, we can assume that this is potentially a confirmed downtrend, which is why you want to hit add alert at trend line, and we'll name it breakout again. Same thing as SQ. So now we have coin and SQ both waiting some type of breakout. If you can see yields come down, like the 10 year or the two year kind of come down uh, from the recent up thrust it had, we could definitely see coin and SQ and other high growth names kind of push up and get out of this rut. You haven't really had any crazy upside in any of the smaller mid caps. It's really been mostly semiconductors kind of pushing the QQQ. Uh, there's a lot of laggers still kind of intact. And I would say coin and SQ are two of those. Obviously, they're more tied to crypto, I think, but as well as they're just tied to tech as well. Usually you want to see QQQ doing good to see, you know, coin and SQ also do good. And as well as lots of things in QQQ are also rate sensitive or yield sensitive, similar to what you see coin and SQ move or even NEO. All three of these are kind of yield sensitive. So you want to see the 10 year come down, you want to see TLT go up as well. That'd be good for the IWM as well. I'd like to see the IWM run next week. Really anything other than the QQQ so we can get some signs of good market breath. That would kind of signal more strength to me and a little bit more resiliency compared to just if Microsoft, Apple, and Meta were carrying the whole damn market on its shoulder. So that's for coin. It's basically the same thing as last week if you tuned in. We have the same demand zone, same 
downtrend line here probably needs to get back over the 130 mark overall if it gets over 130 there's a really good chance for it to push up to that 144 pc we covered last week and then overall the 16186 which is this little triple top peak right here overall but it will need to break out of that and same with sq as we just covered it needs to break out of this downtrend line so that's for coin looking at calls just be patient wait for the setup we have the alert set. Just be patient. All right. Next, we're going into the SPY. So last week, we basically just closed at an all-time high. Here's last Friday's close. Obviously, I really didn't like setups too much for the indexes last week, just because when you break all-time highs, you kind of do sometimes just go into melt-up mode. Same if you were to break a new 52-week high, it can kind of just melt up, and you kind of don't get those big impulse moves anymore. You kind of just get melting like this, which we had last week. Like This is not an impressive move to follow this big impulse candle that we closed last week, but it was some type of melt-up, and it still did close green on the week. I mean, it wasn't anything special, but we still went up up overall and it's basically unchanged i would say i mean it's still the same outlook we're still trending over your 9 and 21 ema combo on the one day we never went back under previous all-time high at 480 has to clear back under 480 for any bearish reversal and as well as i mean this is not like a great place to enter calls or anything like that you would have to deal with these messy candles all week if you entered on monday you could have made a little bit obviously nothing huge or anything like that but i mean there was a lot of bs that came with holding through this week i mean just look at this trend on the one hour this is really not that impressive so here's monday it's basically just chop you had a little bit of a run here on tuesday or on wednesday i'm sorry and then we had a big drop we had another small gap up the next day filled the gap down again and it's just been consolidating here and kind of chopping off the one hour 21 ema and as well as the one hour nine ema so this is your nine and 21 ema combo on the one hour still trending over both if you really want to see a short-term pullback, it will have to get under the one hour 21 EMA, which likely could happen tomorrow if the futures stay where they're at right now. We just pulled back a little, about a quarter percent, negative 0.25%, nothing crazy, but that could kind of send us under the one hour 21 EMA. If we got down under it, that could set us up for a small little pullback, at least into the structure low right here from last week at 485 and there's another little structure low here at 482.78 so if you want to mark 485 482.78 and also you know your previous all-time high it's going to be at 480 you can mark that as well you have short-term resistance right here 488.77 this is peak right here small rejection zone right here so those are some short-term levels you can watch the spy is so tight right now atr is tightened up we're at 52 week highs it's a lot harder to kind of get wider ranges and more volatility when the vix is as low as it is and as well as when we're at 52 week highs so go ahead and mark those short-term levels just because i mean if you if you went to the one day you're not really going to find these all that much but if you go down to the one hour you're definitely going to find these short terms you got the 482 from this small base right here you got the 485 from this low right here and then 488.77 from this peak right here and also a small rejection here so just mark those and um, i definitely wouldn't be bearish overall until it starts you know breaking under 480 because that's your higher time frame reversal if it breaks under previous all-time high that's gonna definitely bring some selling i would think but overall if it pulls back into 480 that could also act as support uh, kind of as, as a back test to push higher or try to at least so you really would need that one day close under 480 to kind of confirm that we can go lower but otherwise for now just mark your short-term levels your 488 the 485 and 482 you can kind of just keep trying to day trade off these for an hour scalp but that's about all i can give you for right now i mean you saw the one day it's very melty uh you guys know i really like the one day nine or 21 ema it's dip buy zones if we can get back down into there which is going to be about you know 483 and then 21 is down at what like 478 you could definitely look for dip buys there but i definitely don't like buying up here because overall usually you're going to see that retrace or mean regression back down to the ma's they'll try to make a higher low and then bounce so your ma's will always give you a better entry on the one day and onto market breadth this is s p stocks above their 50 day moving average it's basically unchanged from last week so here's last friday's close and here's the breadth indicator just slightly above we kind of did continue the trend a little bit and then we had a big pullback on wednesday in breadth almost seven percent and then another push up on thursday it just kind of just recovered what we lost right here in this bar so breadth is still in pretty good shape but overall it's really not trending right now right i mean we don't have any continuation off of this higher low just yet breadth will probably have to start clearing these one day and moving averages if it starts getting over these again 
breath is probably back in good shape and the market could you know keep running as well obviously regardless of breath kind of stalling out here we got, we still have the spy you know working up just a little bit in these last five bars here but like I said a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was even last week, when breath is trending like this, this is when you get really big market moves. Kind of see those big impulse moves as well when breath is doing really good, such as this. When this was going good, the spy was also doing really good and it was ripping and you weren't seeing too much stall out points. I mean, you have a really big trend here other than this stall out point, but you also have breath doing the same thing. We kind of now have breath stalling out and maybe that's why we're kind of seeing these slow little uptick moves obviously it's still going up but it's nothing like this this is more impulsive there's more volume more velocity so you definitely want to see breath kind of keep trending back up if you want to see the market go higher like i said it needs to get over that one day nine and 21 ema that it's used to respect right here until it crossed back down this is kind of when we had that two-day pullback a couple weeks ago and then it kind of just bottomed out a little bit. So it just needs to continue, obviously. Uh, if it can get back above and trend back over, I would say breath is in good shape and the market could keep going as well. At least I'd be more confident in the market to keep going. Maybe we can even see a big impulse move if we see breath and more things participating and going up as well, not just the big techs or you know, not just semiconductors, anything like that. So basically unchanged from last week, breath is still stalled out. To continue the trend, just needs to get over those MAs and that'd be you know good for the market as well we'd likely want to see iwm go up as well for breath which is small mid caps if we get small mid caps participating we can definitely see you know more in the market as well maybe we could just see a rotation like you know big tech pulling back but small mid caps going up that can happen as well everything doesn't always just have to move in tandem together but it's definitely good to pay attention to other things as well uh, pay attention to the dow the iwm the spy and the qqq they can all have a mind of their own and they can definitely move more than the other it just depends so the market's crazy and it's just good to pay attention to these kind of indicators this is your s p stocks above the 50-day moving average definitely at a stall out point which kind of shows me that you know this is kind of large caps carrying the whole market bottom 50 percent maybe not so much because we have this stall out point overall i mean it's not bad or anything you don't have breath collapsing here but you don't really have it going back up either really just at a stall out point, like I said. So it needs to get back over those MAs. That would be good for breath. And last but not least, we'll go over the QQQ. So last Friday, we had a really big impulse move, closed up almost 2%. And we had a little bit of follow through, I guess, Monday and Tuesday. And also Wednesday as well. We had a up about a half a percent day here. And we've been pulling back ever since. So you definitely reached a stall out point here on tech. Likely because we saw NVIDIA and AMD and other semis kind of also pull back just a tad. Nothing crazy. Avgo pull back as well. And overall, the semis kind of do make up a pretty big part in the QQQ or, or the NASDAQ. And I would argue that it was semis carrying this whole impulse move here from Wednesday last week to Friday last week. So now that we're kind of seeing semis stall out as well as the NASDAQ stall out, definitely proceed with caution. But at the same time, it is starting to pull back into the MAs. If it starts getting back into this one day nine and 21 EMA combo, we saw the seasonality. Seasonality looks pretty good for Feb. So if we kind of pull back into these MAs, that could be setting up for another higher low or some type of short-term impulse move back up if we pull into the MAs. So watch for the one day MAs. It's definitely closer to them than SPY is. SPY is a little bit more extended over your MAs. It definitely needs to come down just a tad to get to that. I could even get rid of the drawings here so it needs to pull back into this area right here and then qqq is a lot closer to the one day 90 ma it's really close honestly just about a couple points so if we can get qqq into that that'd be cool to buy the dip as well i'd really like to see it pull into this right here this 412.92 or just 413 if you want to call it that that's a really good back test area this previous resistance that could turn into a big support and bounce short term at least or set up for a nice day trade some type of big impulse move off this level which is also this breakout point right here so something big could happen if it pulls into this previous resistance at 413 and then obviously you have that short term rejection at the new 429.85 or the new all-time high so definitely mark that even though it's short term it's nothing big you still want to mark it i mean there's a clear almost uh, more than a half a percent pullback from this level right here so and then you also kind of have some fall through right here so it's just worth noting and definitely worth marking on your chart but overall this one day 413 from this previous resistance this is a really good level i would like to pull back into here eventually and buy there as well as i'm open to buying at the one day 9 ema one day 21 ema looking for some type of reversal 
If you can get a candle like this, that could lead to a big push up. If you can get a pullback like this as well, something kind of impulsive that is really just obvious that is shaking people out to go higher. Not preferably something like this, where you don't really have any confirmation or really any candle, kind of like this candle right here this is a nice little push up candle that led to a little impulse move. And then you can see we really didn't get more trend continuation until we had this big impulse move on this big bar and this bar right here to kind of show that we could close back over the MAs and continue the trend. And then overall, you had that one I just showed you. This is a nice pull into the MAs. There's a clear reaction or bullish reaction to it to lead to an impulse move. You want to see something like that when we pull into the MAs. You don't want to just buy the first red bar that pulls into the 9 or 21 EMA combo. You want to see follow through or some type of bar to follow through. Obviously, you can you could test your luck uh, if it pulls into the MAs. You could you know be the first one to buy and see how it goes. I mean, obviously, the odds are pretty well in your favor lately. Every time if you bought you know right here, if you bought right here, you might have lost a little bit right here. If you bought right here all kind of led higher so your one day 9 to 21 ema combo are just really good to buy off period but if you want a little bit more confidence and a little bit more less worry i would say definitely wait for some type of bar like this something showing an obvious push up that could lead to continuation something like this as well like this little bar after a big bar like this if you had something fall through like this this is clear that people don't want this to break down yet and it could continue same right here it had a chance to break down and close under it failed, it closed right here, and it continued. So something like that. And that's kind of how you play the MAs. Just wait for confirmation. One thing you do have going against you here for QQQ, if you're bullish, you have the Kitty J going negative now. Uh, obviously, this last one right here uh, a couple times ago, this is a pretty big fake out because it continued right here just a little bit. But then we had a big Kitty J crossover right here a couple weeks ago. So we are kind of getting some signs of momentum slowing. Really small, though. I mean, it's nothing crazy. My intuition tells me that this can still, you know, pull into the MAs, hold as a higher low, and keep trying to go. As well as you have seasonality telling you the same thing, basically, with a potential for a stall out, you know, about the, what is that, February 5th to the 10th or so, this little period right here. I would imagine that the NASDAQ probably looks similar. Uh, obviously, they're both different, but they are made up of some of the big techs that kind of move the same. So the QQQ and the SPY can definitely move similar. If you want to find a seasonality chart, you might need to go find one online because I don't have any access to a NASDAQ or QQQ seasonality chart right now, just the SPY. But I wanted to show you, you know, February is pretty bullish for SPY. You have a stall out point halfway and then towards the actual midpoint of the month in February, uh, we rally and then sell off afterward. So keep the trend in mind, guys. I mean, it's, it's still pretty bullish for seasonality. Uh, we are not breaking any of the MAs. We're still trending over all of them. It's pretty bullish still. So, I mean, if it pulls into the MAs, definitely look for dip buys. This 413, if it pulls into that, we get a pretty decent size pullback. And, you know, this KDJ actually shows some follow through to the negative side. That 413 could be a really good spot to buy. So, definitely mark this 413. You could even right click, hit add alert, and you can put previous resistance. And that can be your back test level later to buy the dip or at least attempt to or look for some type of reversal bar off of it and you know you could trade it back to the upside that's a really nice level or back test area that you could try off of in the future so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm sorry there isn't too much on the indexes this week it's similar to last week last week i mentioned that you should probably be a little bit more focused on the individual tickers we went over because the indexes look so slow and melty vix is low breath stalled out i would say as relatively sound advice uh, last week the market kind of just melted up there wasn't really any big impulse move you would have had to hold through a lot of chop and bs to even get paid so the individual tickers were definitely where it was at coin and firm did pretty good last week as well as sc kind of had a good week overall up into 40. hopefully this week though we can get some confirmation sq and coin will need to break out of the downtrend so you'll need to wait for that if you want to be a little bit more patient of course it, I personally would wait for the breakout, but you know, SQ has good support at the 62s that we covered. Coin has good support at the demand zone we covered. So the odds are pretty good still. If you wanted to enter before they break out, you could, but definitely if you want to wait, be a little bit more patient, wait for the breakouts on that. And then NEO, just make sure you buy a lot of time on expiration. It's very oversold. You really don't have a reversal pattern yet. If it can get over $7, that is a pretty good higher time frame reversal. If you got multiple closes over seven. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our X Trades YouTube channel. I'm gonna get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff. I love you guys and I'm out.